I've only got 25 minutes to talk about something that I can bore for Scotland on. So I talk quite fast and see what I can get through. And in I, I'm going to get you to, to do some singing at the end of it. So, um, and I'll notice anybody leaving, okay, as I get towards the end, I'll call you back. Um, Okay, music um, and the power of music for people with dementia and their carers. And that's been a theme today as well. We're not just talking about the person who has the condition. It's equally important to address the needs of the person who's supporting them and caring for them. Now, one of the um, questions I get asked very often, in fact, I was, did an interview recently and... Um, uh, on the telly, I was asked, why is music so important for people with dementia? The answer is because music is important to everybody. It's not just people with dementia. It's not a sort of new therapy or a new idea that somehow we'll use music with people with dementia. Music is important to all of us. When we're born, there's very little stuff in our brains. We have to fill our brains with all sorts of things. But babies are born with music. Babies have heard a heartbeat. They will respond to that beat. We all, the mother sings to the baby and... Oh, I was going to say the mother sings to the baby and the baby quietens. Um, I know that's not true. Um, but you hope it will. We, babies do respond, though, to, to music. We know that. Um, the music, we are hardwired into music. It is there from the beginning and it is there to the end. Um, so music, if it affects all of us, it certainly affects people with dementia. And the way it might, it's very, very good for all of us, but it has a particular resonance and importance when we are with people with dementia. Um, you'll know this, you'll all have experienced this if you work with people with dementia, that they often can't say a whole sentence. They, cannot, they can't say what they want, but they will sing an entire song from the beginning to the end. There's a wonderful... Um, have any of you read Musicophilia by Oliver Sacks? Yeah, some of you have. Get it. It is absolutely wonderful. I mean, his, all his work is wonderful. Musical perception, sensibility, emotion, and musical memory can survive long after other forms of memory have disappeared. Now, the thing about that is that that's what the people's strength is. For people with dementia, they are lose. Uh, dementia is an experience of loss. It's an experience of losing all sorts of skills and functions and things that are important to you. Um, but if the one thing that stays, if the one area where your strength is, is with music, then play, literally play, to that strength. If we're not playing to the strength of people with dementia, then actually we're completely shortchanged. I always say that when I'm working with people. I say, if you do nothing else, use music. You name one other thing which is as effective. I can't think of it. It is totally immersed in all our being, so why don't we use it? Um, people, um, even at end stage, and certainly a lot of you will have had that experience when you're supporting people, that even at end stage when people can be lying in a fetal position, um, they appear not to be connected, you know, they appear not to be there, um, you think they don't know where they are, you play the right music to them and they will respond. You will see their eyes light up, they will connect. Sydney Bechet for me, in case any of you are ever looking after me at that critical stage in my life or death. Um, just before I get on to some of the other things, I wanted to tell you about some of the very, very important research findings, in case any of you have any doubts about the importance of music. Um, there's masses of research. It's quite interesting to me. It's a bit of the zeitgeist at the moment to talk about music, you know, it's, and everything. This research, some of this research dates back to the 80s, and that's why I've got it in there. It's been around for years. It's not new. Some of you here will have been using music for a long time. We know that, a mu that playing the right music, for example, when we're doing intimate tasks with people with dementia, can reduce and sometimes completely take away challenging behaviour. Now, one of the things that I hear so much when I'm support working with staff, with people who are supportive people with, with dementia, they will say, oh, you, you've all heard this, she's at that aggressive stage. Of course, there's no such thing as that aggressive stage. What there is, is that all of us feel, feeling threatened, put upon, misunderstood, or hurt, can become aggressive. Um, what we know, though, is if you sing to people at times of intimacy, which can be quite threatening, you will almost certainly reduce or take away challenging behavior. Think how many drugs are used to deal with that. You don't need the drugs to deal with it. 
sing. And just by the way, I bet there's quite a few of you in here who are going, but I can't sing. Because <laughs> you were the people at school who were told, I hope you're not joining the choir. <laughs> but actually, everybody can sing. And even if you sing out of... I've never had a person with dementia say to me, could you shut up, you can't sing, right? <laughs> Just start the song and they will go on with it. Everybody can sing. Even if you sing out of tune, it doesn't matter. Um, agitation, of course, singing reduces, uh, music will reduce agitation, and you'll all know that. You'll all know that when you're often agitated, you will use music to reduce that. Um, it reduces what's called wandering, sorry, walking about, and we know that we can reduce the amount of walking about that people with dementia will do when they're distressed. How many, uh, many homes that I go into, I see locked doors, I see people put on the top floor because they're worried about them going downstairs, um, all sorts of strategies to stop people walking about. Why not play them some music? That would be easy. Um, it, re it reduces repetitive vocalization. Um, I'm going through this very quickly. It increases the amount of food people will eat. Absolutely critical. People with dementia, you lose weight, usually because they're, they're not eating and drinking enough. You'll know that. And particularly as the dementia progresses, one of the problems is that they're not getting enough fluid or, or food into them. All the research shows that actually if you play the right music at mealtimes, people will eat more. Now, how easy is that? You know, all the efforts we put into how, could, well, I'm quite rightly, we put lots of effort into trying to find ways to make people eat more. Play the right music and they will eat more. Um, it's free. Um, it reduces irritability. It increases social behaviour. I'll come back to that in a minute. It also helps to alleviate pain. Um, I was involved in a, a, a piece of research looking at pain amongst people with Down syndrome, with dementia, and um, as with other people with, with, with dementia as well, if you play music, you will reduce people's pain experience, which is actually very... This is, I'm not here to talk about this now, um, but actually there's a whole issue, as you'll know, about pain and dementia and how most people with dementia are not getting adequate pain relief, about 80% of them. Um, it increases reality orientation scores. It, it helps people um, uh, recall things. It helps people be more anchored in the moment. Um, and it increases participation. I'm just going through these very quickly because I want to get on to the main thing. Um, so, music is good for us. You know, um, Playlist for Life, brilliant. Play the, Brilliant work that's been done. That's all the stuff that Sally Magson's done. I know there's people in here who, who use that. It has. A, you all know. You've all seen um, those those YouTube things of people listening to music. Singing is even better because when you sing, you actually have to use more. You use you use your oxygen. You're breathing in. You're making your own noise. You're engaged much more, even more than you are when you're listening to music. It's an act activity rather than just a passive thing. So it even adds to that. Singing in a group is even better. Singing in a group actually improves. There's lots of research which shows that it increases our immune system. Why not? Um, but there's many, many more reasons why you would choose to sing in a group. Um, singing in a group is absolutely brilliant. And there'll be a number of you in here who sing in choirs, and you'll know how wonderful, what a wonderful experience that is. However, ooh, same thing twice. Some of the reasons for singing in a group, and the reason, and what I want to really emphasize here is that I am talking about people getting together and singing in a group, not choirs. Um, Sheila, who's at the back there, and I actually run, run a, n a number of groups, which is obviously why I'm here. Um, and one of the things we feel very strongly about is that we do not have a dementia choir. We've been asked a couple of times by the castle if we would go up and with our choir um, to sing at various events up at, at, on, at the castle on the hill. Um, what we say very clearly is we are not a choir. People with dementia are losing skills. Their experience of life is that actually they are often struggling. The nature of choirs is you have to perform. You, the expectation is that you'll be good, that you'll be in tune or whatever. Um, so we are not not a choir, we are, and certainly I would not be advocating that, we are a singing group. We want people to get together and sing together. Um, what does it do then? Why would we have the group? The first thing, obviously, is it increases social activity. People with dementia and their carers are isolated. 
in fact, if you ask carers what the experience is of, of, the, of looking, caring for the person with dementia, they will say the same things as the person with dementia. I feel isolated, I feel angry, I feel uh, separated from my friends, nobody comes to visit me anymore, um, I feel anxious, I feel lost, or whatever, the same sort of feelings. One of the things about singing in a group, if, and, and with carers there, is that everybody takes part in the activity and feels less alone. It helps communication, and the story I always tell is of a lady who came to one of our groups with her husband, and she hadn't spoken, she'd lost speech, she hadn't spoken for five months, and she had, you know, that sort of masked expression, there's nothing, seemed to be nothing there, and his, her husband said, I don't know why I've come, because, you know, it, I just, she, nothing happens, you know, we just plod along, but somebody said it would be good if I came. Anyway, the lady sat there when we started singing and she was sitting, you know, with that just completely disengaged. And then we started singing and she started to tap her thigh. And then she started to rock. And then she started to vocalize, la, 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 la. By the end, she was singing all the songs. The next morning, she woke up, she turned to her husband and she said, I think we should bake a cake. And they did. If that is what 30 minutes of music can do, why are people sitting in homes for older people, in hospital wards, in communities, and not singing? If it is that effective, if it can have that power over people, then we should all be doing it. Um, it gives emotional expression. Um, I was once in a home, um, uh, maybe a while ago now, and a lady came up to me and sang, show me the way to go home. And I thought, yeah, that's really what you want to do. Um, but she couldn't, she couldn't say, but she sang it. Um, unfortunately, she couldn't go. Um, it also evokes all sorts of associations, and you'll know this. The nature of dementia, of course, is that we are going backwards in our lives. We're, we're losing our, what we think of as the present, and people are going back. And this is a story about a lady who came to our group with her husband. She had been a, a leader, in a, a, band, a singer in a big band. Um, she'd even been um, auditioned to sing with Geraldo. Um, and she used to come to our group, but she didn't sing. She smiled. She was obviously happy, but she didn't sing. And one day, um, we were doing a, a, an Andrew Sisters song, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree. And so we had the hats. You know, do you remember the hats? Some of you, I can see half of you here don't even know who the Andrew Sisters are. But those of you who are as old as me will remember the Andrew Sisters. And they used to have these hats, um, like sailor hats. And we said, does anybody want to wear them? And this lady's husband said, you put it on. And she was very, very reluctant. She never stood up. She just sat and smiled. She put the hat on. And we started to sing, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree. And this woman, who had come for months and had simply sat on her chair, smiling, started to play the group. And she walked out and she started, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree. <laughs> she did the whole work, the whole group. She went around everybody. And the whole Andrew's sister's routine, and at the end, she bowed and sat down. Her husband, of course, couldn't sing a word because he was crying. Um, it was very, very emotional. But just absolutely a brilliant example of how you can tap into something in somebody who appears not to be engaged. Um, uh, it provides diversion. People, carers and the person with dementia are beset by endless anxieties and worries when people are singing, that goes. You can see that from the people who come to our groups. They come in agitated and they go away smiling. It does alleviate pain, as I said earlier on. Um, care is terribly important for carers. Carers find other people to talk to who are um, going through the same experiences as them, and that is very, very enriching for them. Um, also in our groups, we have volunteers who we train in dementia, and they are able also to support the carers. Um, it gives immense joy and pleasure. Um, another story, um, giving a very good example, was we had a chap came to us, um, uh, Stephen, and he, um, we knew he was dying, he had asbestosis, and we knew that he was terminally ill. Um, and one Sunday, um, every time he came, we were surprised to see him still. And one Sunday, um, his, his wife had been sitting with him, and um, uh, he seemed to be in a coma. 
and she thought he was going and she sat, she was sitting with him, um, holding his hand, saying goodbye. But he didn't go, he came round, it's a true story, I'm not making it up, um, he came round um, and she saw Stephen, I thought I was saying goodbye to you and he went, this was on the Sunday and he said, no, we're going singing on Thursday, which is when we have our group. And she said, you can't possibly go singing. You're far too ill, far, far too ill. I am going singing. Um, and he came to our singing group on the Thursday. And we have, at the end of our singing group, we go around singing goodbye to everyone, to the song of good night, ladies. Um, so we shake everyone's hand and said goodbye to Stephen on the Thursday, and he died on the Saturday morning. Um, the singing group was the one event, the one social event, the one joyful thing that he wanted to do before he died. And that was true of many people. Why not do it? Um, so, I'm, um, oh gosh, running out of time. Aspects very quickly of the group. By the way, I can't do it all, so buy the book. They're at sale at the end. <laughs> A snip. Um, we would do warm-up exercise. I'm doing this terribly quickly because I got, want to get you to sing. Very important to say to people, if you don't know the words, just go la di da di da Everybody can do that. Um, all, our songs are chosen by the people who come to our group. By the way, do you, the, the, the guys, how often do the men choose a Frank Sinatra song? You cannot sing a, Do It My Way in a group unless everybody's had a bit to drink. It never works. Um, I don't know why they always want it. The, the, no women have ever asked for it. Um, uh, we do singing in unison, um, which is very important just to get everybody singing together. And then we start to do other activities. We will sing rounds. Amazing. People with dementia come to us and they sing part songs. Um, we will sing partner songs. That's where you sing two songs together. Um, we do call and response songs. Um, and we will walk or dance. And that is truly amazing to see people who have not been mobile. We had some Japanese visitors the other day. And at the end of it, the, the, the guy who'd come said to me, that lady that's in that wheelchair, I'm not sure she needs to be in there because she was dancing. And we go, no, she needs to be in there until she's got some music inside her and then she's off, do you know? Um, and people will walk. And very, very important that, that when we're doing the singing, that we get lots of activities, lots of clapping. A lot of people with dementia don't have any activity either. They sit um, and they get constipated and all sorts of other things. Actually, using the music um, is, is, is very important. The, the research at Edinburgh shows, of course, that dancing and music together it's one of the best ways um, to stave off whatever. Um, uh, we start and finish with the same songs so that we're giving a very clear message at the end that we're going. And we actually finish, and a lot of there are people who are just, we actually finish with, which is a war song, um, which is um, Wish Me Luck As You Wave Me Goodbye, um, because then everybody's waving. Of course, there's issues about something. Most of the people who come to our group actually don't remember the war. They're, they're 70, 80, 90 years. Some of them will remember it, but a lot of them don't. But the, everybody knows that song. Um, that's not the song I'm going to get you to sing. Um, right, um, I just, I've got, oh dear, it's running out of time. Um, these are just the sort of songs we would do, just examples, things like Frere Jacques. My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean is always a good one. You'll all have different, act we do actions to that. And of course, some people do My Bonnie. Um, and do any of you do My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean? And a lot of people like that. But again, it's people doing, at, they're moving their bodies while they're doing it. Um, partner songs, I might get you to that in a minute. Call and response. Dividing men and women, um, Daisy Daisy. Do any of you know the second verse to Daisy Daisy? No, the second verse is Henry Henry. Yeah. <laughs> Henry Henry, this is my answer true. I'm not crazy all for the love of you. If you can't afford a carriage, forget about the marriage. I won't be rammed, I won't be jammed on a bicycle made for two. <laughs> and we, so we get the men to sing the Daisy Daisy and the women to sing the other one, and they love it. Um, and then as I say, um, I love to go wandering. The best song, if you're doing this, the best, best song to dance to is I Could Have Danced All Night. And we, we sometimes do that three times through because people don't want to sit down afterwards. Absolutely brilliant. Right, uh, right, because I'm running out of time, I'm stopping there.
by the book, there's absolutely no reason why every church, every community, every old people's home, every nursing home, every whatever, should not be running a singing group. You don't have to be able to sing. All you need is the decision to get a group of people together and start the singing. And you will improve the lives of people with dementia a hundredfold. It is the best thing that you can do. And some of you are doing it already, I know. Those of you who aren't, do it. My agent at the back is selling the books. <laughs> Right, and now, now the problem I've got now is that I don't have any sort of accompaniment. Slightly hoarse, so you're going to have to do the singing. Everybody knows this song, don't they? The Lena Zavaroni song. Um, so what I want you to do, you are going to sing it, and I want you to sing it as loudly as you can, which is what I would say. So, are you all ready? Do you all know the, do you all know the melody? Is there anybody who doesn't know the melody? So, Oh my goodness! Right, those of you who do know the melody, will you sing out? Okay, okay, I'll do. Are you ready? I'll do one, two, three, and then you'll start. Okay, hang on. Okay, those of you who know. In all honesty, the people we do it with who have dementia do a much more lively rendition than that. You were a bit stilted, I thought. What is really interesting, though, is that everybody, well, most of you, I think, actually engaged in it, and you got going. And if we had sung it some more, and if we, certainly if we had the pia a piano or a backing track, you really would have got into it. Um, I've actually got time. I've liked two minutes right now this time you have no excuse because I know you'll know the words we're going to th this could all fall flat okay and I have to tell you we do it with people with dementia and it doesn't so <laughs> um, we're going to do partner songs has anybody done these before Right. The, the, the awkward thing about doing these in Scotland is that the two songs I've got is A, the, 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 the song for the English rugby team, and then the second song is When the Saints, which is actually Tottenham Hotspur's song. Anyway, so what I want you to do, first of all, what we're going to do is just sing these two songs, and then we're going to see if we can sing them together. Okay? So first of all, you all know the words to Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. Are we going to stand up again? Okay, okay, we're going to start off, swing, okay, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home, swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Right, let's stay standing. Oh, oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> We're now going to sing When the Saints, okay? Same, same beat. When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in that number, when the saints go marching in. Right, now this is a test. The people on that side, let me go you're going to be Swing Low Sweet Chariot. The people on this side are going to be When the Saints. But, but, and the people on this side, you need to listen. You can't start together. So the, this side will start when the, and when they say Saints, you come in with Swing, okay? So the two words begin with S, so when the Swing, okay? <laughs> So we'll start off this group then. I, I'll just give you the word, okay? So you're going to start off when, when the saints. When the saints go marching in, when the saints go marching in, oh, I want to swing, oh, that's a good job. When the saints go marching in, oh. <laughs> Sit down. 
Okay, I've actually run out of time. The whole point of doing that is actually we've had 80 people in our group, an absurd number for people with dementia to have in one room, but that's what they, they keep coming. It doesn't matter how many are in the group. We would normally say, I would normally say when I'm working with people with dementia, more than eight people in the room and you've got all sorts of dynamics that are difficult to manage. If you're, you're singing and using music, it works. We can have all those people coming and not getting agitated and actually being relaxed. I'm going to stop there because I've gone way over my time. What I'm really hoping is that actually after today, there'll be at least 60 more groups starting somewhere. <laughs> Please do it. It, 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 it. It's the best thing you can do. And if you're not doing it, you have to ask yourself, why not? Thank you.